folks it is like 607 on a friday afternoon friday evening actually and i'm leaving my office which is hendersonville road this is uh, where i work it's old uh it's one of the offices i work at it's an old uh what do you call it darn um wells fargo buildings what that was our admin's over here for mission health and uh i'm gonna get on the parkway and try to go back over and see my dad at the va hospital so i've been doing a little bit of late work here for mission and let's see it may be too dark to even see any of the autumn color but it's actually right pretty up here right now uh, Asheville is yeah it's just now starting to peak the leaves and everything so let's see if i keep from getting killed here i'm shooting 2.7 k video at 24 frames per second with the gopro hero 4. And this is hendersonville road i'm he actually headed toward hendersonville now uh, so I'm headed south, kind of away from Asheville, but still in, you know, sort of south-central part of Asheville. And uh, like I said, it's a really nice access to the parkway over here and actually built more forest. There's a little access area over here, so I'm going to take us back. Um, it's this little sampler of what the autumn leaves look like. It's, it's really pretty. Um, a lot of the yellow leaves kind of got knocked off. The early uh, color got knocked off by a big rainstorm we had, but now the sort of the deep oranges and reds are starting to come out, the, the trees that still do have leaves. And even at the higher elevations, when I'm driving through the valleys and look up on the high hills, uh, the, you know, say over 3,000 feet, it, the mountains look very red now, so I imagine it's quite pretty driving up there. Uh, in Asheville here, we're not that high up. We're probably 2,300 feet, 2,400 feet, something like that. So Asheville is a mountain town, but it's not like real high up. It actually gets kind of hot here in Asheville. So this is Andersonville Road. It's usually very busy. This time of day, it's not so bad. I mean, it's not as bad as it sometimes is. Uh, I, I'm not in wide field of view. I'm just in medium field of view. So. And maybe the video doesn't look so great. <laughs> I don't know. I, I sometimes don't like to shoot in wide because it just makes everything look so far off. Now, you're going to notice when I get on the parkway, we're going to be in like a canopy of leaves. The video is not going to look so great because, you know, the GoPro shoots at about 60 megs per second and it's shooting 24 frames per second at 2.7K. <laughs> so that's 24 into 60, about not even three megs per frame, right? So if you've got millions of leaves changing position as we drive through them, you're going to end up with what my buddy Danny Fife calls mush. It's a pretty tree over there to the left, that red maple, whatever that is. But um, it does. It looks that makes everything just lose its definition. And if your car stops, everything looks great because the leaves aren't changing much. So there'll be some spots here where I'll actually stop the car as we stop at red lights and whatever else, and you'll be able to see all the definition in the leaves but as we're driving through here boy some pretty leaves over there at the little wreck park whatever that is um as we're driving through the leaves it'll just be kind of mushy mess and it's just it's a shame because when you're really watching it on your computer it looks great uh because it's 60 megs per second it still is pretty decent frames of video but when you're when youtube you upload to youtube it just turns bad because youtube usually compresses by a factor of about 10. so you're uh you know your video that's you know maybe three megs per frame or 2.75 megs per frame is actually down to about gee you know 150k uh 300k maybe per frame something like that as i stop here i'll stop for a second we'll see everything will clear up and look really pretty i'll stop just for a minute while these cars go by so whatever leaves are in front of us now ought to, there ought to be plenty of definition in them should be looking pretty nice. Now I'm gonna take off and everything will start turning to mush again. It's a little dark. Turn the lights on. Um, tried to shoot some video on the way over here and I got an SD card error on my GoPro. So I, you know, I actually came from the VA hospital uh, back over this way. Uh, a little while ago I'd been visiting dad and then I had to come back to the office for a little bit of work. To look for some resources couldn't find them and back here i am okay. 
not so pretty at this point, but I did see some, some nice reds and oranges further on up. So um, I'll go ahead and give you all a little bit of an update about my dad. Um, over the years, you've seen some videos with my dad in it. If not, look for you know my channel for Hugh Taylor Glenn. Hugh Taylor Glenn. I've got a great dad, and he'll be 77 on the 30th, which is next week of October soon. And I'll say happy birthday to dad, 77. He's born 1938. And so he's been battling ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Only it's sort of a kind of a harsh strain of it, actually a variety of Lou Gehrig's disease we learned about from an ALS specialist, a neurology doctor that's been counseling with us. Apparently veterans of my dad's era, which is the early 60s, and maybe on even later, uh, if they get ALS, they develop a worse kind of it that progresses very fast. It's not the Stephen Hawking kind where you can live for years and years and years. Uh, it usually gets you pretty fast. So dad was diagnosed maybe a year and a half or so ago and he's now in hospice at the um, at the veterans hospital in Swannanoa or in uh, Oteen people call it, VA hospital of Asheville. And so if you're the praying type, then pray for my dad. It's way tougher than I thought it was gonna be. I guess in my mind I had, you know, thoughts of what ALS would be and what dad would face, but it's it's very bad. I'm not going to go into details about it now. Maybe in, at some point in the future when it's not so close to me, I'll talk more about it. I will say this. I think it's going to transform me uh, to some extent into a, you know, champion of ALS research. I don't know. I, I it, it's, it's, changed, it's changed the way I look at in you know, my purpose in life, sort of. <clears throat> right now, I'm just trying to be a good son and, and help my dad, you know, get through his last days on this planet. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens later. But I will talk at some point about ALS and, and what it does to the body and and why it's uh, why it's really. <laughs> worse than about any I mean I, I've, I've seen I've been with people other family members as they go through hospice and death through cancer and you know other terrible ways of dying but this one is particularly really really bad and so we're our family's dealing with that again keep us in your prayers so hopefully this video is not just, just terrible to look at <laughs> I can see some sunlight still on the tops of the trees and in some places we have enough light to make this maybe enjoyable Boy, it was a prettier earlier, and it is. It's probably getting close to the peak leaf time. I would say maybe another week of absolute beauty up here, maybe into the first or second week of November, and then it'll all be gone. So it's, it's a fleeting kind of thing, the beauty of Western North Carolina, but boy, Western North Carolina is pretty. So I'd say right now, if I were to go a thousand feet higher, which if I were to go back toward Craigie Gardens again, I would see some absolutely stunning scenery. And uh, you know the only problem is you get up so high on that on that particular road, like it's pretty through here. Wow, um, and, and then the leaves are all gone because you get to a real high elevation fast. This part of the parkway that we're on, like I say, 24, 2500 feet. Uh, I can drive 10 miles from here, and I can be at 4400 feet, uh, and a 15, 18 miles, and I'll be at you know 6,000 feet high, which is pretty high for. North Carolina for the eastern United States. So 6684, 6684 feet is the tallest mountain in the eastern U.S. and actually eastern North America. That's Mount Mitchell, which is in only about, I don't know, 25, 30 miles from here. So um, this is a good way to bisect Asheville, this bit of road here, this uh, the parkway. I could have gone on further down Hendersonville Road, got on Interstate 40, looked at a lot of nothing just just highway and cars and it's maybe one or two minutes shorter drive if even that than getting on the beautiful parkway and going 45 miles an hour and just really seeing something pretty and special so I'm, I'm just about to the other side of Asheville where the the VA hospital is so I'm going to drive us up to that and hopefully our our video is recording 
I kind of like doing audio commentary from inside the car because then I don't have to sit at the house and try to do it. <laughs> I, I, I kind of don't like to watch my video again. I, you know, I mean, I do like to watch it later. Like, I'll go back years later and look at video I did, or I'll, you know, years later and look at video I did years before. Uh, but I don't like to sit in the studio and try to make commentary over the top of it a lot of times. And I end up doing that a lot, but I, I kind of like the deal that I've got this Zoom H1 in the car with me and my little Sony mic up on my, I've actually got it stuck. I, 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 I fastened it to a, uh, a uh, safety pin that is stuck into the lining of my, of my, the roof of my car. I just crossed over Interstate 40. So that goes down to uh, 74A, it says, okay. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought it was I thought it was I-40 I just crossed over. Got our sun here, don't we? Again, it's about 614 in the evening. Dark in spots and light in spots. The sun will be going down about the next 30 minutes or so. But again, I just thought I would share this bit with you. Uh, for those of you who subscribe to my channel and, you know, really kind of get involved with me, I won't say in an intimate way, but kind of, sort of, you know, I have a lot of people that subscribe because they see a tutorial or something or, and then so they'll, they'll hit subscribe and then they never interact with me. But then there are probably 150 people out of the 9,000 or so that subscribe at this point that actually really kind of develop a friendship with me. And so I've got you know, people that are actually kind of like friends now, or well, they're very much friends on YouTube, particularly a couple dozen of them anyway. And um, for those of you who are just casual subscribers though, and you watch this video, I, I am a graphic designer, videographer, photographer guy. I've done it all sort of uh, for the graphic arts. I've done video for years. I've done uh, photography for a long time. I've been a print graphic designer since the early 90s, so I do Adobe InDesign, Illustrator, and all that stuff. Um, and then I've done, I've been an audio engineer longer than anything. I started doing audio and some studio work and stuff back in the 80s. So I, my, my whole kind of graphics career, well, I guess my graphics career would even go back further, though, when I was a kid and I was an art student. I was kind of, um, I, I don't want to like, say it, it sounds pretentious to say it, but I was sort of like a little child prodigy art kid. Now I just crossed I-40. Okay, that was Interstate 4. I crossed the railroad tracks now on the river. But anyway, I was sort of the little art prodigy kid. And uh, so when I was like 13 or so, I was having shows at libraries with my paintings and all that. And uh, that's, that's kind of the, those, those days went by pretty fast. What happened is uh, I got burnt out. By the time I was about 17, I'd painted so many paintings and my mom kind of had aspirations that I was going to be a great artist and pay for my college with paintings. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I just kind of got pushed too much. You know, you're going to be an artist and, and um, you know, you're, you, you, know you, should, you should charge. I was, I was selling paintings for like 35 or 40 or 50 bucks, which back in the 70s, well, 70s when I was doing this, that was a lot of money to me, I thought as a kid, to sell a painting for 30 bucks. But... You come in from school or from ball practice or whatever, and and uh, you know you were supposed to sit down and whip out another painting, and that got old. <laughs> I did not dig that too much. So we're going to go west on 70. This must be where I need to take off, or did I go too far? There's the VA hospital. Here we go. Here's my west on 70. So I'm getting off the right exit here. So you're going to see that the Veterans Hospital in Asheville is very close to, uh, to the parkway. It was right at it. Folk Art Center is right, if we'd stayed straight, we'd gone a little bit farther. And pretty nice Folk Art Center. And it's really, it's, it's, you know, some of it's stuff that's made here regionally in Appalachia, some of it's not. That's why I kind of, I don't know, it's a lot of real expensive stuff there, pottery and art and marquetry and arts and crafts but some of it I don't know that it's even from this area so I just think it's stuff that people sell to make money this is interstate 70 or not interstate it's a highway 70 and uh, I'm going to be going toward Asheville now but this is actually a, a place called I think it's called Oteen O-T-E-E-N 
sort of a little suburb outside of Asheville on the east side. And this Veterans Hospital is outstanding. Uh, Charles George VA Hospital had been, again, awesome my dad. The care here is great. It's a different sort of care when you go into hospice, though, than what my dad's been experiencing when the, uh, with the ICU. He's been getting a lot of critical care, and they've been just fantastic, but a little bit different story when you're in an ICU or when you're in a hospice. But here we get a, a view of what it's like. This is on the right here. This is the uh, it says Department of Veterans Affairs, Charles George Medical Center. Asheville, NC. So this is the place where a lot of our Western North Carolina veterans end up. And that's going to be the main hospital there in front uh, to the right and in the hospice area where my dad is over to the left. So kind of an unusual video for my blog. True. I want you to see the leaves a little bit, see some of the color, see a little bits, little tiny bits of Asheville you wouldn't normally see. You know, it's not the pretty, you know, uh, Art Deco Asheville. It's just the regular old mundane Asheville, but it's Asheville nonetheless. And I uh, just thought this would be kind of a cool thing to do. It's, it's therapeutic for me to get to uh, do my videos, and I have to find, it's hard for me to find time to do them now with uh, the situation with Dad, but Hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Peace to all who watch. And please do subscribe if you like the channel. Uh, keep us in your prayers. And uh, send us any, you know, positive vibes through the uh, comments if you like. Thanks.